My name is Jacob Ochola Mwai. I wish to begin by sincerely thanking His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief Mr. Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta for the decent burial that he extended to my late father, the late President Emilio Mwai Kibaki. I am very grateful for that fitting send-off. Secondly, I would wish to convey my message of condolence to the family of the late President Emilio Mwai Kibaki and the entire people of Othaya. I share in this grief and may the good Lord let his soul rest in eternal peace. I have made every effort to try and resolve this issue with my family. I went to the extent of contacting certain individuals I suspected would be of great help in helping me resolve this issue. The first person I contacted was the head of the Catholic Church, His Eminence Cardinal John Jiwe, and I met him together with his personal assistant, Father Wallace. I did so because my late father is a staunch Catholic. And so I felt that the church would be more willing to lend me their ears. I also went farther ahead and discussed this matter with Dr. Haminwa, who is my attorney. I went ahead and discussed the same issue with Justice Okubasu on behalf of Dr. Haminwa. I also had an opportunity to visit the president's office to have an appointment confirmed with the chief of staff, Mr. Joseph Kinua, three times. I did disclose to them the reason why I wanted to see him, and these were strangers. They promised to get in touch with me. They never did, and this was almost three years ago. I also made contact with Dr. Willie Mutunga, the former Chief Justice, and pleaded with him to intercede on my behalf. All these efforts were not successful. I did travel back home to Athaya, and I had a meeting with my auntie, Esther Waiderero, and I did explain to her my predicament of not being able to visit with my late father at a time when he was ailing. All this did not bear any fruit. However, at this juncture, I wish to state clearly that I am not a brother to the late president. I am his son, biological son. I have been very much in the picture. I made each and every effort to visit with my father at his Muthaiga residence as well as the office in Nyari. I am well known to the guards there, the GSU guards. And as you're aware, all these premises are under CCTV cameras. And each time I visited my father's residence, I never went alone. I went with my son and a driver. When I went to Othaya, I never went alone to see Tata. I went with two pastors together with my 11-year-old son. I don't have much to say. I can only ask for your prayers. I believe in prayers. I did listen to the two bishops during their mass for my late father, and the messages were touching. And I believe that those prayers will be answered. My stepsister Judy also prayed and prayed for peace and unity. And I believe that those prayers will be answered. And I did make attempts to visit with him in hospital. And I was not able to get access to him. I spoke to the chief executive officer of Nairobi Hospital. His name was Pamba. And I went to him, requested that I wanted to see my father. And he outrightly said, no, I have instructions. And I know the family. You are not one of the family members. I didn't want to argue with him, so I left. 
I was born in 1960, July 22nd, in Kaloleni, Nairobi. I grew up knowing I was Luo. I didn't know I was not Luo. When I turned 21, the person I knew was my father died. A year later, my mom disclosed to me that the person who died was not my father. That was an adopted father. So she told me she was going to talk to my father because my father wants to see me and introduce me to my father. Which of course she did after a month or so. And I had the privilege to meet the former president. I must state here that the former president was a very common person to me. My adopted father was a member of current country club. The late president was a member of the Karen Country Club. I was raised up in Karen, and we frequented the club. And he's someone I knew all my life. And so when the time came for me to meet with him, even when he walked in to the Amboseli Grill foyer, little did I know that he was the one who was my father because he's someone I'd always known as I was growing up. And so, when he came in, we walked straight into the restaurant. And at that point, my mind was disturbed. I wasn't sure if he was the one. I was hoping someone else would come up. But eventually, after the orders were placed, my mother broke the news and says, OK, Jack, um, I told you I discussed this with you. And here we are. We need to start. Then I realized this was my father. And indeed, she said, Jack, as I told you, that was not your father. That was your adopted father. This is your biological father. And my father responded, yes, Jack, we don't want to subject you into a lot of injustice. It is important that we let you know the truth. We are your parents. And it is better for you to hear from us rather than getting it from the, uh, the public domain. And from that day on, on the 21st of June, 1982, I knew that Emilio Mwaikibaki was my father. It has not been easy for me. Having grown up and speaking Luo and knowing that I was Luo, only to realize 22 years later that I am not Luo. I was only raised up by a Luo who loved me so much and gave me the very best. I am what I am today because of that adopted father. When my late stepmother passed on, I was at Consolata Shrine and I met Daddy. And he was very grateful that I went there and attended the funeral service. I did reject the offer to go to Othaya because I was traveling to Ethiopia. After then, I met Daddy several times at the Nyari office, number seven. And I had discussions with him. He did assure me that he was going to make sure that I got my share of what I'm entitled to as a person. I trusted my father because I've always trusted him. So someone who is going to ask, where have I been all this time? There has been a lot of events. I have gone to three law firms with this matter so that I could get recognition. I've been home three times to Odaya, and I met my auntie, the only living auntie that I have now. And she told me she could not help me because she can also not access daddy. And so she was very welcoming, but her hands were tied. There's no way she was going to help me. So these are efforts that I have made. But to answer you in short, Mze was a person I interacted with, and not only in private, but even in public. I was manager Mombasa Beach, and Mze used to come. Mze has a residence right adjacent to Mombasa Beach. But for him to access Mombasa Beach, he had to travel three kilometers to come to Mombasa Beach. During Easter and Christmas, he would come and I would sit with Mze for two to three hours. People didn't know who I was, and people were wondering, who is this 
sitting this old man for so long. And what I'm saying was in the public domain, all the staff in the hotel knew who the person was. He was a vice president. And so they didn't know what the relationship between me and him was. And I didn't disclose to them. I didn't see the need to disclose to them who this was. They could not imagine that that was my father because my name's were Ochola. This is Emilio Moe Kibaki. I was manager at Milimani Hotel between 1986 and 1987. Mzee used to come to Milimani. Then the general manager of Milimani was Schwartz. And Mzee would sit with me for two to three hours. And so the general manager was grateful that here is someone who spends time, who can bring in the vice president as a customer, and he visits us very frequently. I was manager in Sirikwa Hotel in Eldred at the time when Mze was replaced as the VP by the late Dr. Karanja. When Mze came over to Eldred, I received him. I was the front of house manager, so that any dignitaries had to, I had to welcome every dignitary and make sure that their check-in process was up to date. Literally would have to do the registration form and all they would do is append their signature. It is me who took daddy to his room. Under normal circumstances, daddy had been to Sirikwa Hotel prior to that. And he would occupy the presidential suite, which is on the first floor. That is protocol. But once you're not a president, and there's a sitting president who visits a hotel, they are the ones who occupy the presidential suite. You cannot give a lower rank to occupy that suit, even if they're paying. If there's someone occupying that suit, and there's a head of state, you request that person to vacate, you pay for that bill for that night, and they give up that presidential suite. Now, at that time, I could not get daddy to the presidential suite. When I told him, it was against the protocol and I had received a call, a call from Stephen Kositan, who was the managing director of African Tours and Hotels. I shared that with my father. And daddy told me, no, Jack, let's go. I took him to my room. I was a resident at Sirikwa Hotel. My room was 315. When I took him there, I went back downstairs to make alterations because now he was not going to occupy the suites. The suites in Sirikwa are on the first floor together with the presidential suite. So I had to go back to the reception to find out which room was available. So I went back and I took 319. So I assigned daddy 319. He signed the registration form and it was taken back. But for your information, my father never slept in 319 that night. He slept in 315. My first wife, Lily Wanjiru, had carcinoma of the rectum when she was only 27, 26. And she was admitted at the private wing in, uh, at Nairobi Hospital, both even at the Aga Khan at the private wing. She was in and out for almost two years. And December that she died on 31st. On the 20th, 20th of December, my late wife was at the private wing at Aga Khan. And my father came to visit with her at eight o'clock. And we spent a memorable time. Now, everyone was shocked. Here was a lady, a young lady, and here comes the vice president. Uh, so that was one instance. The second instance, in 1986, when I was at Mombasa Beach, I was also staying at the, resid at, at, at the hotel. I had a room in the hotel and my wife had delivered our first son, Hillary. So he was born on the 23rd of, this, oh, no, 23rd of November. And so of Christmas, they came over to see me. He was barely two months. So they stayed with me in my hotel room. 
At that time, I think it was around the 23rd or 24th, Mze came and visited with us, and that was the first time he was meeting Wanjiro, and also saw his first grandson. He never saw Wanjiro again after that. He only came to see her a few days before she passed on. He was there on the 20th of December. Wanjiru passed on on the 31st of, uh, of December, and we laid her to rest. But she had carcinoma of the rectum. So those are instances that I've had with my father. Yes. I go to public places and people keep confronting me. Who are you? You resemble the former president, or you, remember the, you re resemble the president. And I always brush them off. If I were a bad character, I would have injured the character of my father. But I recall the first thing that he told me when it was disclosed to me that he was my father, and he himself did it. He told me, respect me as a father always, and never do anything that would injure my character. And he said it three times that evening, between 7.30 and 11 o'clock. So, in short, what I'm relaying to you is not something that started today. It is out of respect that I waited for the entire process to end is when I make this press conference. Yeah. It would not have been right. At the end of the day, he's my father. No matter what he has done or what he has not done, he remains my father and I respect him. I was not going to rush to court to put a stay or demand a, a DNA. To me, I would consider that disrespect to someone who actually brought me into the earth. And above all, I'm a Christian. Take it from me, 